there. So, <clears throat> so tonight we will be having a survey sa Book of Esther, Old Testament survey. So, I know every one of us or many of us here, uh, this book is very common and the story of Esther is really, really common to us. Sa mga Sunday school natin, parati nating naririnig itong story ni Esther. So, tonight, I think madali lang ito, no? hindi tayo mahihirapan masyado sa pag-share. And at the same time, um, we will be talking about the story of Esther. But yung magiging focus natin tonight will not just be kay Esther, but uh, primarily about the work of God. No? Titingnan natin kung nasaan si God, ano yung ginawa ni God nung time na ito, nung time ng story nila Esther. So, uh, the book of Esther survey. There. So the story of Esther and Mordecai is a literary masterpiece with profound theology. God fulfills his redemptive promises not only through great miracles, but also through divine providence, working through ordinary events. So even the actions of people who do not worship him are woven into patterns with our uh, presentation of the book of Esther. So our content, uh, the things that we will be learning tonight, we have the overview and background, the historical setting, the authorship date, occasion, and the purpose why the book of Esther is written, the genre, uh, and the structure, special considerations, unique features, what are some specific advice for reading the book of Esther, Ano yung mga key verses natin na meron tayo? What are the major themes and also the theology? So, let's start with the overview and the background of the book of Esther. So, the book of Esther <clears throat> is the story of God's providential preservation of Jews throughout the Persian Empire through Mordecai and his niece Esther. So, as, as with the book of Ruth, Esther appears among the writings. Doon sa Hebrew Bible, yung Esther ay nakalatag doon sa mga writings. Pero doon naman sa Septuagint, this is the Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible already na ginamit during the early church no? uh, sa New Testament. So nakalagay na siya, it was placed in its historical setting. Okay, basic historical setting na. Although, after Ezra, Nehemiah. Again, the book of Ezra and Nehemiah at that time are as one pa siya. So ngayon, uh, in our Bible, hiwalay na po yung dalawang book na yan, the book of Ezra and Nehemiah. So before, it is after Ezra, Nehemiah, the book of Esther. <clears throat> so with a marvelous display of wit and irony, and with an obvious literary skill, the author tells the story of how the Jews in the Persian Empire were saved from genocide. So, Makikita natin ang story later on uh, as we will talk about also about ng, sa historical setting. No? Uh, bakit nandoon sila sa Persian Empire? Anong time ito? So, ayan, we will see the story later on. Story of how Jews in the Persian Empire were saved from genocide. Instigated by a member of a royal court who was in a Persian. Ito na yung si Haman. Possibly an Amalekite who carried with him their ancient hatred for God's people. Kaya meron siyang ganun na plan. No? Yung patayin lahat or i-eradicate lahat ng mga Jews. Story revolves around the actions of its four main characters. So the four main characters that we will, be, uh, we will have tonight is King Xerxes, si Haman, Mordecai, and Hadassah. And her Persian name is Esther. Pero yung original name niya is si Hadassah. So, si ang Persian king who is King Xerxes, he is actually an arrogant eastern uh, king who serves as God's foil in the story. Tapos, we have also Haman, yung villain, no? yung contrabida, a foreigner who has been elevated to the highest place in the empire next to Xerxes himself. So, malaki talaga yung kanyang power. May, uh, meron talaga siyang power. We is even more arrogant than Xerxes. The other one, si Mordecai naman, ito yung Jewish hero, a lesser court official who uncovers a plot that saves the king's life but whose refusal to bow to Haman 
sets its motion the basic intrigue of the plan, plot, a plan to kill all Jews in the empire. Nagalit si Haman doon. And that's si, si Hadassah naman or si uh, Esther. Yung Persian name niya, Esther. Siya yung heroine. Mordecai's younger cousin who by winning yun na nga sa ating uh, invitation beauty contest. Ayan, may pa-beauty contest na noon. Who winning a beauty contest becomes king sources queen. And the one responsible for unraveling Haman's plot the saving the Jews from annihilation. Okay? So, this is the overview and background. Let's go with the storyline naman, no, as part of the overview. Um, yung storyline, we have the three parts. The first part, it begins with a lavish feast given by Circes and the, depos the deposal of his queen Bashti, who had refused to come and be put on display. Ito, because nagalit yung king, ang nangyari, uh, gumawa siya ng decree, at saka the same time, nagpa-beauty contest, no, naghanap ng pinakamagandang babae para maging queen niya. So this leads in turn to Esther's becoming queen. The next part of the storyline, the second part, is the basic plot of the story with its various intrigues and folds uh, in the central <coughs> section. That's in chapter 2, verse 19, hanggang chapter 7, verse 10, which climaxes at two private feasts that Esther holds for Circes and Haman. Later on, we will talk also about itong mga feasts, ito yung banquet na piniprepare, no? Uh, ano yung significance din ito? And the last part of the storyline, the third part, uh, the rest of the story primarily has to do with the Jewish defeat of their enemies and their celebration that eventually becomes the Feast of Purim. I don't know if I, I pronounce it correctly, no? Ito na yung Feast of Purim. So dito na originate yun sa Book of Esther. The book concludes with Mordecai's exaltation to Haman's position where he achieved much good for the Jewish people. Actually, if we will be reading the Book of Esther, it's very short book because it only has 10 chapters. Yeah, it only has 10 chapters. So napaka-short lang na story itong makikita natin in the book of Esther. You can just read it. No? So, part of the Caribbean background, though the details offered in Esther give it a ring of authenticity and suggest a realistic historical setting for the book, many <coughs> sorry, excuse me, have drawn the conclusion that this book is not intended as an accurate chronicling of things. Kaya itong karoon ito ng kuan, ng, ng tanong dito. No? This opens opens up the question of literary genre. Is this history? Is it a historical novel? Is it parable or allegory? Ayun. So, uh, these are some of the questions kung ano yung literary genre Kasi, nagka-question pa rin yung, yung kung totoo bang nangyari ito. No? Kasi there are uh, research, there are yung mga contemporary resources, yung mga written documents at that time, uh, yung mga naka, na, na, nakuhang mga records na wala talagang records about who is this Esther, who is this Mordecai, sino to si Haman. So, is this a history talaga or a historical novel ba, a parable ba, or allegory? So, ito yung naging mga question. And this is also naging, naging ko ano, na-include na din ito sa mga naging discussion doon sa kanyang canonicity. Na na-include siya as part of the canon. Book of the Bible. Book. Isa sa book sa Bible. Alright. The most serious objection to the authenticity of the book is the inability of contemporary sources. Ito na yun. To identify most of the principal players, notably si Vashti, Queen Vashti, si Queen Esther, Mordecai and Haman, All right? So, marami pa yan, no? If we read, uh, if we research, there are so many series of uh, objections and there are also answers to those questions, uh, mga assumptions, no? So, ito yung mga uh, hindi matagpuan. Okay? So, the book possesses many of the uh, characteristic of the modern short story with fast-paced action siya, mabigis masyado, narrative tension, irony, and reversal. Ito na yung sinasabi nating reversal. Ano ba itong reversal? May mga pa-plot twist. 
the blend of these literary features with a historical setting and theological purpose, however, suggests that the book of Esther is in a class by itself. There is nothing like it in the ancient literature and in the Bible, all the story of Joseph comes close. So, ganun siya kaganda yung, pag, yung itong book ng Esther. So, let's go with the historical <clears throat> settings. Okay? Let's go with the historical settings naman. Um, the story <coughs> is set in Susa or right now the Iran, the modern Iran in the court of the Persian king Xerxes I, si Ahasuerus. Sa King James Version, yung, yung si King Xerxes is si King Ahasuerus. Who ruled 486 to 465 BC and is remembered by ancient historians as a ruthless and powerful king. Although kung makikita natin at babasahin natin sa, sa, sa Book of Esther, hindi naman ganun ka ruthless masyado yun pagkakuan sa kanya no kasi nga because of her, his relationship with Esther but uh, in in the history we can see uh, he is a ruthless and powerful king the events occur after the decree of Cyrus which is in 539 BC allowed the Jews to return to their homeland but Esther and Mordecai had remained in exile so post exilic na po ito uh, tapos na po yung decree uh, decree of Cyrus na inaalaw ng pabalikin ang mga Jews. So, doon sa, sa Jerusalem, sa kanilang homeland. However, itong si Esther at saka yung si Mordecai at saka yung ibang mga uh, ibang mga Jew ay eh, nagstay pa rin. No? Mayroon pang nagsistay doon sa uh, Persian Empire. If we look back last time when we also have our OT survey doon din sa Nehemiah, uh, may mga reports nga, di ba, nakuha si Nehemaya about the people na, na nandoon sa, sa Jerusalem kung ano yung sitwasyon doon. Kaya nga bumalik din si Nehemaya. So, hindi pa lahat. May mga batch by batch ang mga nagsisiuwian at nagsisibalikan sa kanilang mga homeland. And at this time, si Esther and Mordecai, hindi pa sila bumalik doon sa kanilang homeland. So, ito yung para mas maintindihan natin. This is the chronology, chronology of the restoration period. If you can see here, ang nasa kalagitnaan siya ng ni Ezra. So nasa chapter 6 siya part no ng Ezra. So si Ezra yung story ni Ezra tapos 482 to 473 nandiyan si Esther. Tapos Ezra pa rin nandoon siya in nandoon siya sa gitna at saka sumod nun naman si Nehemiah. <clears throat> so makikita natin dito yung time ni Ezra during our OT survey in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, this is already yung pag-restore na, no? Nang, nang, uh, nang, ano ba ito? Nang wall at saka ng temple. So, bumalik na nga sila. Nandun na yung decree na pwede nang silang bumalik sa kanilang homeland. post exilic na ito. Okay, how about the authorship and date? So, okay, the author writes from a perspective looking back on that time so it may have been written no yung 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 date written after 424 BC probably written within 100 years of the events it records okay written within 100 years of the events it records so the book of esther make no about its author likely originated with the jewish author who lived outside of the holy land and was familiar with susa and Persian palace kasi masyadong detailed yung 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 place doon no yung sa palasyo sa Persian palace and sa Susa and the entire place doon sa book of Esther so most likely no uh, na yung author is one yung lived outside of the land and from there with Susa and Persian palace there. The first record of the events was likely written in the region of Susa. Tapos yung final na biblical form niya may have been written in another location na. And intended for all who celebrated Purim everywhere. So et, ito yung naging main purpose. No? So later on we will also talk about the occasion and purpose. Kasi it is intended for the celebration of Purim. And ano ba itong Purim na sinicelebrate nila? So again, uh, yung date nito, yung first record nito, eh, maaring naisulat doon sa Susa 
and then yung final bibicarm form niya eh nasulat na sa another location para uh, yung intention is to for all who celebrated Purim everywhere. So ano bang ginagawa nila nung time na yon sa sa mga record na ito kapag nagse-celebrate sila ng Purim? So we will learn that in the occasion and purpose. So there seem to be at least two primary purpose for purposes for the book. <clears throat> yung first Um, it demonstrates God's providential care of His people even when they were outside the promised land because of disobedience. See, God is still at work. God is still with them. God is still caring them. Masking na, na, naan sila dito sa gawa sa promised land. Uh, wala pa sila completely no, tanan nakabalik sa ilahang homeland sa promised land. And second, It also explained the origin of the Feast of Purim with a view to commending its observance to the Jews. Okay, so kanina sinabi natin na yung uh, dito sa ayan intended for all who celebrated Purim everywhere. No, yung 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 record nitong Book of Esther. So. Again, yung purpose niya, uh, it explains the origin of the Feast of Purim with a view to commending its observance to the Jews. Kasi yung kapag nagse-celebrate sila ng Feast of Purim, accordingly, uh, the history uh, by Herodotus being one were often written for public recitation at private gatherings or public festivals. So Esther was evidently written for the same purpose. So sinulat din yung Book of Esther for the same purpose for public recitation at private gatherings or public festivals. So while they are uh, they are feasting, no, they they celebrate the feast of Purim, merong public recitation ah uh, ng ng book na ito doon sa event na iyon. This is for them to remember, no, what God has done sa kanila. Alright. <clears throat> so this time, let's proceed to the genre and the structure. Ano yung genre niya at ano naman yung structure? Kanina nga, we have some literary uh, may question tayo with, with regards to the literary ano, uh, concern dito sa book of uh, Esther. Okay, the story of Esther is theology told with irony, satire, and humor. The story of Esther is not simply resolved. It is resolved with a series of reversals. So, or tinatawag na peripety. Ano ba itong, I don't know if I, I pronounce it correctly, no? Uh, what is this peripety? Uh, this is a literary device. Uh, play in the story, an ancient device that Aristotle referred. Uh, ito yung sudden turn of events that reverses the expected outcome of a story or yung tinatawag natin ng mga plot twist. So if you read the book of Esther, may mga plot twist talaga siya, no? yung, yung story na yun. The story of Esther is not simply resolved. Ayan, sorry po. Uh, the, the, the book of Esther is not simply resolved, it is resolved with a series of reversals. May mga plot twists na makikita doon sa story. So, magugulat na lang tayo sa mga plot twists na yon doon sa mga story. Alright? So, for the structure, ayan. This literary structure is organized around three pairs of banquets. Yeah, may mga may banquet. Ito yung sinabi natin kanina that mark the beginning, climax and conclusion of the story. If you read the book of Esther as what I've said, uh, it only has 10 chapters. May may mga pairs of banquet ito. Sa first pair, you can see that in chapter 1 verses 2 to 8. Tapos Papunta siya sa second pair. Ito na yung banquet na pinipair ni uh, ni Esther, ni Queen Esther, para kay King Cerses at saka in-invite niya si Haman. Ito na yung sa second pair. At dito na rin, niya na rin, uh, doon sa chapter 7, 1 to 10, sinabi kay King Cerses kung ano talaga yung dahilan niya, bakit siya nag-prepare ng banquet, kung ano yung request niya. Dito niya 
uh, sinabi kay King Xerxes. And the third pair, ito na yung celebration nila, no? Uh, na they were saved, no? Sa uh, nangyari at ano yung ginawa ng Panginoon sa kanila. So they celebrate it, third pair in uh, chapter 9, verses 17 to 19. That's why when they celebrate the Feast of Purim or yung uh, celebration nito, uh, they do it two days. no Two days. So makikita din natin dito sa pagsulat ng Book of Esther, yung mga banquets naman ay ginagawa by pair. So yung celebration na ginawa din nila ng mga Jew is two days. Pair din yung celebration. Two days nila ginagawa. So this motif of banqueting is especially appropriate in a story that explains the origin of the festival of Purim. So let's go with some special considerations. This is the only special considerations na meron tayo. We need to consider yung Esther's story took place in the time period of the book of Ezra. These events occurred between the first and second returns and therefore come between Ezra 6 and 7. So yung event na ito, uh, between the first and yung second return ng mga Jews doon sa homeland nila. And therefore, come between Ezra 6 to 7. This is our special consideration. What about unique features? What are the unique features of the Esther? The story of Esther is an enchanting rags to riches story. Na, uh, Typical sa mga drama natin yan sa mga Filipino. Rugs to Riches story. And this is also one of the Rugs to Riches story. And uh, another unique feature is uh, if a brave and beautiful young woman is the main character of the story. Just like uh, sa uh, naman, no? Book of Ruth, uh, makikita natin dito yung sa Book of Esther also. Uh, the Book of Esther also has an evil villain a classic bad guy named Haman. Tapos Esther is selected as queen through a very interesting beauty pageant. Okay, so this is some of the unique features. What else? <clears throat> Nowhere in the book of Esther is the name of God mentioned. Just like in the book of Ruth, ganin to rin yung nangyari. Likewise, no one in Esther prays or mentions any of the covenants in strong contrast to Ezra and Nehemiah. So hindi talaga ito na mention doon sa Book of Esther. Unlike doon sa Book of Ezra and the Book of Nehemiah. In the Book of Esther, the entire Jewish population is about to be annihilated. Only the action of Esther and God behind the scene prevents this total destruction of the Jewish people. Yan, because meron talagang magandang reason why Esther was chosen the Onsa Beauty Pageant to become a queen. And uh, the reason behind is that this is for salvation, to save ang kanilang, uh, ang the, the Jewish people. And Esther is also never quoted in the New Testament. And wala sa New Testament na mga books, makikita natin na na-mention si Esther wala doon. So these are some of the unique features that we have for the book of Esther. Let's take advice for being Esther. So we have to take note of this as we read the book of Esther. First, yung kanyang literary. So the author is a master storyteller, evidenced not only by the way he unfolds the character and plot, but especially by his inclusion of details that provide humor and irony. Yeah, example daw dito, yung, yung hindi, lang, hindi lang pagsunod ni Queen Vashti, di ba? So, ano yung ginawa ng king? Galit na galit ang king. Nagpakuan ka agad siya, no? Uh, Nagpa-beauty contest ka agad siya. Tapos nagsulat agad siya ng decree na that all women, that all wives should give high respect sa kanilang mga husband, sa mga kalalakihan. So, ganun yung uh, mga i-consider natin no? sa literary. And also, the second factor is yung theology. Although the book of Esther is known for the fact that God is never mentioned in the book, the author nonetheless expects his intended reader to see God at work every turn in the story. So if you read the book of Ruth, doon sa Ruth, di ba makikita natin, we see God at work behind the story. Okay? 
here, we can also see God at work. In the book of Esther, we can also see God at work behind the scene. And at every turn, ito na yung mga plot twists and mga reversal na nangyari in the story. Okay, I'll just give you one of the plot twists or reversal. There was a time I, I, uh, na yung king, si King Cersei, hindi siya makatulog. Uh, tapos, he, he nag-ash siya sa, sa isa sa mga royal courts doon na to give him, gusto niyang magbasa, no? kasi hindi siya makatulog, yung copy ng mga records during na time ng pam, pam, pamunuan niya. No? So, asa niya doon, ano yung kawang ni Mordecai yung sa pag-save sa kanya kasi merong gustong kumatay sa king. So, what happened next is that uh, be, ano ba yan, ni-recognize, in-acknowledge doon si Mordecai. And because of this, mas nagalit pa si, si Haman sa mga Jew. So, Key verses. What are some of the key verses? So we have Esther 3, 5 to 6. May I request si Fernand, Cloud, to please read itong first na key verse that we have. Cloud, are you there? Yes. Uh, Esther chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. When Han Hamel saw that Mordecai would not kneel down or pray, uh, pay him honor, he was enraged. Yet having learned who Mordecai's people were, he scorned the idea of killing only Mordecai. Instead, Haman looked for a way to destroy all Mordecai's people, the Jews, throughout the whole kingdom of Xerxes. Thank you, Cloud. Okay, so we have also another, Esther 4, 14. Uh, Sir Dens, please read one of our key verses. Esther 4.14 For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Alright, this is the words of Mordecai to Queen Esther, no? Na kailangan may gagawin talaga siya. Okay, another, also we have uh, in Esther 4.16 Ah, uh, see, si Jorly May. Joel, please read. Esther 4.16 Go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against, against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Right, so we see here the courage of uh, Queen Esther and he really asked all his people, the mga Jewish people, to fast and pray for three days. So this is one of the key verses. Uh, another, we have in Esther 5, uh, 3. So I'll read. Then the king asked, what is it, Queen Esther? What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom, it will be given to you. This is the words of uh, King Xerxes to Queen Esther during their first uh, banquet. No? Kasi hindi pa, hindi pa sinabi ni Queen Esther yung kanyang request. Uh, sinabi niya lang yung kanyang request doon na sa next, sa second banquet, which is in the chapter 7 na. Alright, we'll see. Meron pa ba? Alright, meron pa in, uh, this is I think the last, Esther 9, 16 to 17. Lynn, please read this uh, verse verses Esther chapter 9 verses 16 to 17 Meanwhile the remainder of the Jews who were in the king's provinces also assembled to protect themselves and get relief from their enemies they killed 75,000 of them but did not lay their hands on the plunder this happened on the 13th day of the month of Adar, and on the 14th, they rested and made, made it a day of feasting and joy. Thank you, Lynn. All right. So this is the time na actually yung may decree kasi na nailabas na una si uh, King Xerxes, not knowing na uh, ito yung gusto talaga ni Haman na papatayin yung mga uh, Jews. So, naglabas siya ng pangalawang decree after na nasabi ni Esther yung kanyang uh, gustong sabihin no, para isave yung kanyang people. That's why sinabi ng king na pwede nilang protektahan yung sarili nila. They can fight back. No? So, 
ito yung nangyari. Uh, maraming namatay ng time na yon Yung mga enemies nila. So, they protect themselves from their enemies. Alright. So, next for our major teams. So, we only have two major teams dito sa Book of Esther. First is yung Purim. Ito yung parati natin sinasabi na celebrate ng mga Jew. The Book of Esther is being read annually at the Jewish celebration of Purim. And also, the purpose why one of the purpose why the Book of Esther is written uh, para ma-remember ma nila. So, the Book of Esther is read annually at the Jewish celebration of the Feast of Purim. The name Purim, sorry, the name Purim is entirely appropriate for God's deliverance, does not come by the angel of the Lord slaying the enemy in the night, but by means that others would view as chance. Yung word na Purim, kung babasahin natin yung chapter 9, uh, doon makikita natin saan talaga siya nang galing, ano yung ibig sabihin niya. So yung celebration ng Feast of Purim, it it was already mentioned it, it it was already mentioned doon sa chapter 9 bakit nila kailangan i-celebrate ano yung sila celebrate nila so it's a joyous celebration uh they 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 celebrate with joy they celebrate celebration nga talaga kasi nga sa anong ginawa ng Panginoon by saving them dito sa hand ng kanilang enemy while they are in the Persian empire and another major team theme is the people of God. The reader has been brought through a 1,500 year story of God's self-disclosure to his people Israel despite themselves. So if we recall from Genesis that God chose Abraham and his family to become the people of God. So dito naman sa book of Esther, parang binabalik tayo sa 1,500 year story of God's self-disclosure closure to his people. Doon sa uh, Genesis kasi, um, dito yung na, ito na nga, uh, yung pagpili kay Abraham, revelatory people of God. no? Dito na yung pinakita kung sino yung pinili ng Panginoon. Pinili ng Panginoon. Uh, yun na, si Abraham and yung kanyang family. So, the deliverance of Israel recorded in this book was not done in such a way that it bore witness to the world of God's power. Rather, it was accomplished so as to confirm believers in their faith in a sovereign God. So, But in the post-exilic period, the spiritual condition of the people moved to the top of the agenda. And the revelatory function seems to have been put on hold, not put on hold until the righteous remnant would emerge. Ayan. Hanggang sa continuation tayo, doon na tayo mapunta uh, hanggang sa pagpili ng Panginoon uh, dito sa New Testament, no? sa New Covenant. Alright, so there. Theology. So we're done with the team. We only have two teams, the Purim and the people of God. So for the theology, first, the omnipotent sorry, and omnipresent God. So God's redemptive promises are fulfilled through his providence. The great paradox presented by the story is that God is all-powerfully present even where he is most conspicuously absent. God works to fulfill His redemptive promises. So, makikita natin dito, although hindi talaga tulad ng ng sa root, hindi mention sa Panginoon, that we see how God uh, works behind the scene at saka doon sa mga twist, plot twist, reversals na merong nangyari during doon sa story ni Esther. Paano nag-work ang Panginoon? His to his providence. And the faithfulness of God. So the book of Esther affirms that God is still faithful to the covenant promises. So he made at Sinai and that those living beyond the borders of the promised land are not beyond the reach of his redemptive 
protection. Still, nandoon yung faithfulness ni God sa kanyang promise sa kanyang mga tao. Yung kanyang faithfulness doon sa kanyang covenant na ginawa doon sa mga tao niya, doon sa Mount Sinai. And that those living beyond the borders of the promised land are not beyond the reach of His redemptive protection. This stage is in progressive uh, revelation anticipates the great commission when the whole world would be within the gospel's embrace. Lastly, the saving grace of God. Being in the Christian canon of scripture, the book of Esther is an example of the reversal of human destiny that ultimately in the sweep of redemptive history was accomplished by Jesus Christ. Kung may mga reversals na nangyari, ito yung pinaka no, na nangyari dito sa human history, yung pagdating ni Jesus. Because of our sin, we should expect nothing but death. But in the ultimate reversal of eternal destiny, because of the cross of Jesus, we have been given life. So these are the theology. Again, we have the uh, the omnipotent and the omnipresent God, faithfulness of God to sa iyang sa iyang mga promises, sa iyang covenant promise, sa atu sa sa iyang mga katauhan, and the saving grace, the grace of God that is always present, always at work, sa lives sa iyang mga katauhan. So. This is the end of our presentation for the book of Esther. And these are some of the references or sources that we have used. We have seven references. We have the Wilmington Bi Wilmington's Bible Handbook. We also use the NIV Biblical Theology Study Bible. We also have used the Constable Notes. Ginamit din namin yung a survey of the Old Testament workbook nila Hill, Walton, and the rest. We have also the, used the How to Read the Bible for All Its Word, Nifi and Stuart. And also the Baker Illustrated Bible Handbooks of Heis and Duval. So that's it. Thank you very much for listening to the OT survey presentation in the Book of Esther. Asa na si Obed? Bed? Say next. So we're done. Uh, Mag-divide pa ba ta? Not na no. Mag-picture daw. Ah, mag-picture. Right. So, post recording. Ay, sorry. Bed, pwede na ako i-change ikaw na ang mag-host. Host talaga hapon ka, sir, para sure. Dagahan mo host. Okay. So, kung sa'yo mag-post recording and...